The average time a hockey player spends on the ice in one shift is about 25 seconds, then back to the bench to recharge before another shift. A figure skater competes with a program that is four and a half minutes long, and it's full steam all the way, no timeouts, and when they finish, they need to look like it was a walk in the park. There's uh, some misnomer out there that skating is all art and actually no physical activity, but the results that we know about is that the long program equates to a mile, a mile cardiovascular. So from the time he steps on the ice to 45 seconds in, his heart goes to maximum heart rate, 209. These boys are doing 10 triples during this. They're spinning, they're putting on every kind of power push that they can do, and they come off the ice and sit in a kiss and cry. Skating is really, really difficult to do. We make it look easy because that's our job. They make it look seamless, but you know, I'm involved in the sport and often when I'm watching what they're doing, I, you know, I kind of take, I kind of grab the edge of my seat sometimes too. Think about it, we have to do all these minute, detailed movements and adjustments in less than a second in the air. It's an amazing thing. Can you imagine these people are skating on a little bitty teeny blade and when they land, they weigh seven times their body weight and they're stopping 200 pounds of centrifugal force. I remember the very first time I saw a photograph of me doing a jump. <laughs> it was scary to see your face pulled by the centrifugal force and it looked like someone had shoved a small loaf of bread in my back of my pants because your butt cheek is swinging right out. It's very strange to think that my body goes into that weird shape every single time I jump. Explains a lot about it. So what I think as a young man I really, really liked about this sport was skating as fast as you could and throwing yourself up into the air and spinning faster than your eye can see. It was a jungle gym, you know, with no rules on slippery surface. It was a blast. Still is. Still, still love jumping. But the quad is about being able to be patient and then releasing at the right time. Everything has to snap at the same time. The quad has to be perfect. The quad is the quadruple jump. Four rotations in the air, a near impossible feat only a few short years ago. The quad was very difficult simply because nobody was doing it. And in my day, it was the Hail Mary pass of figure skating. And now it's math. The difference between 2008 and 2012 is now the, the athletes have had to add the quad in because so many of them are doing it. And with Patrick, when he brought the quad in his program in 2011, he put himself in a position that there really wasn't anyone that could catch him. Patrick Chan has it down to a science. It's trying to juggle while standing on a balance beam, you know, at the top of the CN Tower, right? It's a mix of multiple coordinating movements and timing. Patrick was having a hard time with the quad until 2009, when he started training with Christy Crawl and a computerized tool called the Dartfish. There are only a few coaches in Canada who use this program. My name's Michelle Lee. I coach in Barrie and in Oakville, and I'm a dartfish specialist. It's a computer program that allows you to video skaters, save videos, analyze videos. You can put skaters side by side. You can put skaters beside themselves. You can kind of say, you know, here's where you could make a small adjustment. Yes, and this is where you're in the air position, and we're still searching for a little bit straighter. A lot better actually. The athlete can see it, you can see it, and the coach can simplify it so the athlete can make a simple correction. You see how he gets his body weight forward over his feet? Having mastered the quad, Patrick's technique is now the template for others to learn from. The skaters, I have them watch Patrick's technique because of the high quality of skill that he has both on the takeoff, in the air, and his technique for landing. Patrick is amazing. The airtime for a triple axle is about 0.6 of a second, and for a quad, it's about 0.65 of a second to complete the four rotations. Mid-quad, skaters spring 23 inches off the ice, roughly the same height a basketball player needs to dunk a ball. 
The difference? Skaters land on a three millimeter wide edge and hit a target the size of a quarter on one foot. It's a sport that offers high speed, mega risk and thrills and the adoration of throngs of women. So where are all the young male skaters? You have to be a certain size to skate in this sport. Physiologically, there are certain attributes you have to have to be a male figure skater. You can't be tall because the leverage on this is way too great. You can't be thick because then you can't rotate fast enough. And there are certain physical attributes you have to be to be a pair skater. Now you'll notice that the pair skaters and the dancers are much taller. They're broader because they can't turn around the air four and a half times. Honestly, I think that there's a big gene pool for basketball and football and there's a very little gene pool for figure skating. But it takes more than a particular body type to build a champion figure skater. You need to be as nimble with your wits as you are on your blades. I always say it's like spinning plates. You gotta spin the plates and then you forget when you gotta run over and spin another one. So you always gotta keep them spinning. That's what it feels like in figure skating because there's so many different things you gotta keep an eye on. It's a balancing act. First of all, the ice, the blade, the skater's body, the movement, the music, then there's an audience that's 360 degrees, then there are the judicators in front, the technical specialists that are analyzing and filming. But there's just so much going on in an athlete's mind all the time. For me, usually it's the millisecond before you do a jump and you let a negative thought in. And that negative thought will overpower the 10 positive thoughts you had going in. The mind can play tricks long before you take to the ice. We have, you know, maybe a 30-minute practice earlier in the day and you come back to the rink, then you might have half an hour before you go back on to perform. So there's a lot of time in the day. There's a lot of time to think. And it feels like a lot longer. A lot of time to play games mentally with yourself and, and doubt yourself. You are about to be scrutinized by the world. You are about to be identified as what kind of a skater you were in three minutes instead of 12 months. It's, it's very cruel. Meantime, Patrick Chan's on top again. It's tough on the athlete's mind to stay disciplined and have everybody saying like, oh yeah, you know, you're God, you're God, you're God, and realizing I ain't no God. I still have a lot of training to do. He's now in more media. He's now doing more shows. Everybody wants a piece of him, a thousand new best friends because he's a champion. And everybody wants to be connected to that and all those terrible things that happen to an athlete in that year following your first championship when you've won. And then there's the flip side of all that attention, the sense of isolation. I always made a joke. It's like we're all waiting on death row because it's like so nerve wracking and you're skating in front of thousands of people by yourself. So it can be quite overwhelming. I don't like being alone because then I start thinking too much. I start, you know, telling myself these awful things and negative things. I turn to my coach. Oh, 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 oh. I picked a little bitch. I, one spot. I got her. Oh, you little animal. <laughs> The key is to try and stay calm and, um, you know, it could be from breathing or playing games. What music do ghosts dance to? You don't want to be too anxious and too excited and that you're to the point where you can't control your own nerves. Soul music. <laughs> but once the music starts, you know exactly what you need to do and you know that by the time the competition comes in, you can't do anything else you just got to let it go it's mind-boggling how much there is that has to be dealt with but that's where training comes in a solo performer must deal with his nerves on his own but that's not the only peril accidents can happen and the potential for disaster goes up exponentially when there are two sets of blades on the ice working with a partner demands intuition empathy and trust Typically with new lifts and new moves, we work a lot off the ice. Mm -hmm. So we work quite extensively so that we feel comfortable with the movement and then, you know, slowly as we feel more comfortable, transition onto the ice. Of course, I trust Scott to lift me and I trust that he won't drop me. Um, 
and past experience shows. Like 14 years, you haven't, you haven't. Whoa, so. whoa, <laughs> don't jinx anything. <laughs> you, at the end of our career, you can just. I don't know why they call it the death spiral. You go into it at full speed, and then you swing her around. I would never have someone swing me around into a death spiral, but the fact that your partner will let you do it is a huge thing. Rudy's a trustworthy guy. I have complete faith in him. I know that he wouldn't do anything on purpose to hurt me. In a sport where athletes fly through the air at top speed with knives on their feet, accidents, though rare, are bound to happen. Skating looks beautiful and it's gentle and it's wonderful and balletic and musical and then dangerous, just like that. And that's what's scary about us. Uh, collisions on the ice, uh, we have blades on our feet, uh, hitting heads on the ice for concussions, but um, it's a sport. And you know, you don't do any, you don't cross the street without a bit of risk, right? So what are you gonna do, stay home? Paige and Rudy have come to Moncton to compete for a spot on the national team at the upcoming World Championships. Thank you. She's still just getting away from you, though, eh? But while practicing last month, a slip-up. We were doing a triple twist, and Rudy fell right after he threw me, so it resulted in us both falling, and I hit my head. And after a week or so of constant headaches and change in mood and emotion and dizziness and whatnot, I got a CAT scan and then learned that I did have a concussion. With the concussion, you're supposed to stop all physical activity until the symptoms stop. I'm the kind of person, I came from a family that you just tough it out. It's who I am that I, I just, I skate through it. But it was my decision to keep skating because nationals were coming up and we've been training really hard all year long for that top two spots to go to Worlds. Toes to the death spiral. If sure. you're doing the short stuff, I'd like to do that. Okay, let's go. Okay, dazzle. Let's go. Come on, guys. Pick it up. Pick it up, Rudy. Let's go. I did a lot of talk with my uh, sports psychologist just of how to deal with whenever I notice a symptom of pages kick in. Rudy was really being cautious and kind of holding back, and so we we kind of came off and we had to sit down with Patty and Lyndon, and we're like. You can't treat Paige differently on the ice because then it just brings us down a level. So we had a quick little team meeting and then came back out the next day and had a much better practice and better team. I always said to the kids as a coach, if you skate scared, whatever you're afraid of happening, you're going to make happen by skating scared. Let's have courage. Let's do it. Let's see what I'm made of. It's supposed to be fun. This is when we're the most alive, you know, when the most is on the line. That's why you work so hard, is to put yourself into that precarious situation and see what happens. Figure skating may be graceful and artistic, but at this level, it's also fiercely competitive. And I really enjoyed myself. I'm just happy to be here. Oh, stop saying that. You're going out there to compete, and you want to win. You want to kick some ass and go for it. Do you want anything else controversial? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rosie, get me fired up. Being the hunters, it gave us something to focus on. Skating to win, next. <laughs>